In this video, I'm going to show my setup for scanning 35mm film and slides with a DSLR and a janky combination of old gear and way too many adapters. Now, before starting, as kind of an aside, I'd like to explain why I use a DSLR for scanning film and not a dedicated film scanner. Uh, I actually have a real scanner, pretty good one actually. It's an Epson V800 and it kicks a moderate amount of ass, but it's got some issues. And the biggest one for me is that for 35 millimeter, it's incredibly slow. The film holder only holds one strip of six shots at a time. So you have to constantly be loading it and unloading and reloading, and hitting preview and waiting and waiting and unloading and reloading and hitting preview and waiting and waiting and waiting. And if you're using a DSLR, you can just feed the entire roll of film through uncut. And I can do a whole roll in less than 20 minutes, which feels incredibly fast. <clears throat> And it's also, the scanner also has a glass carrier, so the film holder actually has a little piece of glass that you have to, you know, sit the film on top of. Um, that's useful for keeping the film flat, um, but if you can get enough depth of field on your camera, it doesn't really matter. And from my point of view, it just means there's that many more surfaces which have to be kept dust-free. So on the scanner, it means I have five. You have the surface of the flatbed itself, you have the bottom and the top of the glass and the negative carrier, and then you've got the bottom and the top of the negative itself, and these all have to be meticulously clean. And for 35 millimeters, where everything is pretty small, the dust is relatively large and is going to be really obnoxious if it's there. So you just spend twice as much time dusting as you do actually scanning, and it's awful. With the DSLR, there's just the film itself that has to be dust-free. Every other surface which really is just the diffuser and the backlight, they're way outside the film plane and totally out of focus. So they can be incredibly dirty and it doesn't matter at all. You can't see it. And then finally, with the scanner, it's really hard to achieve perfect focus. Uh, its depth of field seems incredibly shallow and does have a way to adjust it. It's got these little sliders on the film holder that you ratchet up and down, which raises and lowers it a little bit. And there's like one in each corner and one in the middle. Um, but you have to like adjust these and then wait for a full scan, full res scan, and then, you know, adjust them at random again, do another full scan, then squint at your screen and try to decide, okay, did that make it better or worse? Uh, and be like, oh, I made it better in this corner, but like this corner is all wrong. So, okay, fiddle with me again. Like you can spend hours trying to get that thing in focus and make very little progress. Um, if you have a DSLR, you can just see it in real time. Like, you just look through a viewfinder, or, I mean, I'm doing it tethered, so uh, I can see it on my giant screen. Uh, I can see the film grain come in and out of focus immediately. It's awesome. So basically, it's just way faster. 35mm, uh, you know, the quality, or the, the amount of resolution in 35mm film isn't that high. Uh, so, like, I'm using this thing, Canon EOS 60. Uh, it's got a 20 megapixel sensor, which isn't even that high. Uh, this thing is more than good enough. Uh, you could probably make do with not even as good of a camera as this, and it would be fine. Um, so the main benefit is I get the same quality, uh, but it's just way faster and way less annoying. And yeah, so I, that's why it's great. Okay, so back on the main topic. Uh, what am I using here? Well, like I said, I'm a Canon guy. My current gear is this Canon EOS 6D. If you're using the new Canon RF hotness, uh, you'll need to adjust this a little bit. But basic premise is the same. Uh, any full frame camera is just going to work just fine here. The other important piece is slide duplicator. So this here is a Minolta Auto Bellows 1, uh, or well, part of one. Uh, this is an awesome kit. Minolta sold this in the 80s. Uh, they made a whole bunch of different variants of it later. There's like Autobellas 1, 2, 3, I think there's even Autobellas 4, a little different. Um, I am actually missing the Autobellas part of it. So the idea is you mount your camera here, and there would be a bellows between your camera and the lens that you could like focus in and out, and then various attachments on the end, uh, which you can also focus in and out. And I just have this one, which is the slide duplicator. And it also accepts uncut film. So slides, you just shove them right in here. Uncut film, pop this guy open, uh, and kind of carefully position your film in there, lock it closed, and feed the film through. And it's even got these little D 
dealies over here that you can screw on, uh, which sometimes I use and sometimes I don't. Uh, yeah, you just stick your uh, spool of film on and just feed it on through one frame at a time. I picked this up used on eBay. Like I said, it's missing some of the parts. Um, but actually, the part in between the camera and the lens, if I had gotten it, it would have been, what, Minolta SR mount, not EF. So I'd need a bunch of adapters, which would probably take up too much space. Um, this setup has the lens sitting pretty close to the camera. There's not a whole lot of room. Uh, any adapters in there probably would make this not work. So it's just as well that I don't have it. Uh, and instead, I have this. Uh, this thing, I think I bought up on AliExpress or something. Uh, as you can see from the quality of the casting, it's kind of terrible. Uh, it's got tons of wobble to it. Uh, if you tried to actually use this in like a real like setting, it would probably be terrible. But for this, eh, it's fine. Costs like nothing. Uh, and luckily it fits right inside. And I'll show you how this is all assembled. So okay, so and this is this is all EF mounts. This is EF on this side and EF on that side. Now we need a lens, and for that I'm using this little puppy. Uh, this is a Roden stock Rodagon 50 millimeter f 2.8. Uh, it's an enlarger lens. These are really cheap, um, which doesn't mean they're bad. They're actually fantastic lenses. They're really cheap because you can't really use these on a camera. They don't have any provision for focusing. Uh, they need to be basically mounted to a focus rail because that's how an enlarger works. Uh, so they're really cheap because not being usable on a camera kind of limits their utility. But for this, that's exactly how I'm going to use it. And also, enlarger lenses are optimized for, you know, enlarging or shrinking images. I'm going to be doing this at one-to-one. -one. Uh, you know, my camera is full frame. I'm shooting 35 millimeter film. It's a one-to-one -one, uh, scale. Uh, so that these are optically optimized for that really well. But yeah, all it's got is an aperture ring. That's it. Uh, it does 2.8 uh, and goes up to, I think, 16. But its optimal focus is at f8. So that's what I've got it set to. This, like every other enlarger lens on the planet, is M39. Uh, better known as Leica thread mount. Uh, just because... That's what everybody uses. Um, so I've got over here this photodiox adapter for M39 EOS or EF. Um, this I got on I think Amazon for real cheap. And then basically you mount this all together uh, and attach it to this bellows over here, and then put your film in. And for that I've got a whole mess of adapters. The other thing that ended up being necessary was with the camera mounted here. Uh, oh, well, here, I'll take off the, uh, the lens I actually use. So you mount the camera here, and uh, I don't know if you can see that, but it's a bit low. Uh, it needs to be up a bit. So for that, I just went and got this, um, this tripod mount. This is... Uh, a knockoff of Manfrotto's, oh geez, I forget what they call it, but it's Manfrotto's quick release plate. Um, the actual Manfrotto branded ones are like really expensive. This thing costs like, I want to say like 20 bucks. Uh, it's not as good, but for purposes of this thing, it is more than enough. Uh, I think it's actually built quite well, pretty stout. Um, it's even got the thing to keep you from accidentally releasing it. Um, and it's almost exactly the right size. So first off, we'll go and attach this to the slide copter. Try and get it all lined up just right. Squeeze that guy down. Uh, I've already got the other plate, end of the plate, installed on the camera. So that's on there. Next, we need to mount the focusing rail. This lets us move the and larger lens in and out very precisely so that we can, like that can, that basically controls uh, how large the image is in the frame. Uh, you move it closer and the image gets, uh, let me think, smaller. And you move it closer and it gets bigger. And we have to fiddle with it until 
our image, or our slide, or our negative perfectly fills the frame. So this is my M39 to EF adapter. Just screw these guys together. Pop off the film, the lens cap, and lock it on. There we go. This guy uses a 40 and a half millimeter uh, filter thread, which sounds like a goofy number, but actually is a really common filter thread for actual like Leica lenses. Um, so it's kind of fitting because it's using a Leica mount in the back, and I guess they just decided to use the same one in the front. Uh, I've got this adapter that gets me from 40.5 up to 46, which is a little more of the common filter thread. Put that on there. Uh, on here, this thing has a little ring with a filter thread, and that is 52 millimeters. So then I've got another adapter that can take me from 46 up to 52. Screw that on. And then actually, let me pop this off and screw that on as well. So there's three step-up adapters to get these guys sandwiched together. Now we need to put all this mess together, and to do that, first you have to actually rack the uh, the slide copier all the way out. Uh, probably not all the way out, but I just do it anyway, just to make the most amount of room possible. And then kind of finagle these guys in between. I'm going to tip this sideways so you can see what's going on. Just kind of rest it like that. And I might have to like open this up a little bit. And I really can't do this on camera, can I? Oh, there we go. So that's in there. Get it all lined up as best you can. And crank it down. Oops. Crank down the, uh, the quick release plate. Get it as solid as you can. And you take the bellows from the slide copier part, slide it over here, and there's a little locking screw to hold that in place. All right, this is it all set up. Um, now to actually use it, I like to tether to my computer. So over here, open this guy up dig out whatever port you need. Uh, in my case, it's mini USB because this is a camera from the past. And then also, to save yourself a lot of um, annoyance, I like to take the battery out and just use an AC adapter uh, so I don't have to worry about the battery running out because you're going to let this thing run for a while and probably forget to turn it off. And it's just easier to not have to deal with any of that. And pop this guy in. There we go. And everything can now be powered up. Uh, yeah. Oh, what am I forgetting? You need a light source. This is probably the only other actually expensive part of this gear. Um, because the quality of your light source really, really impacts the quality of your, of your photos. Especially if you're doing color. They need to be broad color spectrum. Um, I am using this what is it? Artograph Light Pad 920LX. Um, this thing has really good color. Um, it isn't exactly cheap. I want to say this costs like a hundred bucks, which sounds like a lot, um, but it's really useful. So I'll just position this thing over here, just off screen. Power it up. Put this thing back here, and then try and line this up. Basically, the way this works is you've got, oops, this is a little locking screw, you need to unlock that. You, you turn this and it moves the lens in and out. Just shut off that light because it's screwing up the video. We don't need it yet. You move this thing in and out until the image fills the frame. Uh, get it as close as you can because otherwise you're just wasting pixels. And then kind of you know, lock it down and then you want to bring it closer to the film. This is how you actually focus it. And for focusing, you'll want to set the aperture on your lens all the way open. 
um, on this particular lens, like here's here's the uh, the aperture ring. Oops, I actually had it all the way up. Set it all the way to its widest, 2.8. Um, the depth of field at this setting is going to be tiny, like little teeny tiny minuscule movements will cause the grain to come in and out of focus. When you've got the grain focused, you can go ahead and set it down to its optimal aperture, which for this lens I believe is f8. And then at this point, you'll just take all your pictures, um, load up the, uh, the software for tethering, um, adjust your exposure compensation. I usually find I have to set mine to around plus two thirds. Um, basically you want, you look at your histogram and you want the histogram to not show either clipping on either end. Um, digital cameras are actually better at capturing more exposure. So if you can try and scooch the, your histogram to the right by increasing exposure, it's just an artifact of how the data is encoded in your RAW files. Oh, and by the way, definitely use RAW. Uh, if you're using JPEG, what are you doing with your life? Uh, you just you get way more information, and especially if you're scanning negatives where you're going to need to invert everything and futz with all the colors, you need all the information you can get. Um, I think I've covered it all. I think that's about it. Um, yeah, like I said, no part of this really other than the camera and kind of the, the the light are actually expensive. Everything else here is either really, really cheap stuff bought off of AliExpress or ancient gear bought off of eBay for very cheap. Um, and large lenses, $100 is gonna be like a lot. Uh, you can probably get a good and larger lens for even less. You want a 50 millimeter uh, because that's just the size you use for 35 millimeter film. Um, and then, yeah, this auto bell is, I'm using this Minolta one. You don't have to use Minolta. There are a bunch of other, uh, camera makers that made similar things like this. Um, I just got a good deal on this one. That's about it. Uh, there are others that are comparable. Um, but it's gotta have a slide copier. That's the really important part. And there's not actually that many of those around. Uh, cause otherwise you, like you need something to hold the film flat and allow you to feed it through efficiently and... It's just much easier if you have something purpose-built for that. Anyhow, this is my janky setup. It works really well for me. Hopefully this was some combination of useful or amusing to you. Uh, thanks for watching. Have a good one.